Hello! Welcome to Skein the Knits. My name is Ali. I'm a Norwegian living and knitting in London. Welcome. Welcome back to those of you who have been viewing this for a while now. Wow, we're already on to episode 6. And a huge welcome to new viewers because I keep getting more of you, which is very, very nice. Uh, yeah, another bleak, cloudy day in London. It's autumn, it's getting colder, it's fine. Uh, my radiator is going nuts, so it keeps making it a lot hotter than it needs to be, and even if I switch it off, it doesn't actually switch off, so who might need to do an outfit change again. But for the time being, this is my Marius. Another Marius, I have so many. This is the first one I made, I believe. Uh, it's made of Sonne Sisu, which is a sock yarn, sock, sport weight sock yarn. Really good, really durable. Wore this a lot and it's still pretty good. It smells like a so, super body sock yarn. Uh, yeah, I like it. I thought we'd just crack on talking about my works in progress now because it's not really that much to cover because uh, it's that time of year where things are a bit. There are some things that I believe I can share because there's so many people in my life who uh, are interested in knitting. So. I have made a dent in my advent calendar. Hang on, hang on. Here we are. I finished mitten number 18. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, it's so cute. These are the most adorable things. Super so cute, tiny. I'm sure they will look a bit nicer when they're blocked because they do sort of bunch together when they're so, so small. And this is, yeah, number 18, so yeah, I made the previous 17, which has taken a while. I've started about this time last year, I think, and I will finish before September 1st. I will. It's just that I haven't made the thumbs for the majority of them, so even though this is mitten 18 and that should mean that I am, you know, likely to finish, I don't know about the thumbs. They finish fairly quickly. They're very tiny thumbs. So yeah, this is my entire mitten. Family, so many. So, do you have anyone with thumbs? I got four with thumbs. So the first ones are a bit smaller because I just chose the wrong needle size, really. Uh, but they're so cute. So it's okay that the first four days have just smaller mittens. I think that's just there's nothing wrong with that. It's consistent in a way. I just I love the color scheme of these. I made them in Cascade 220 fingering weight. Which is a yarn that makes me so excited because it's just a very fine pure wool that's like fairly nice and soft. Uh, it's probably because it's worsted spun, but yeah, it's still good. Uh, I want to make a garment out of this yarn at some point. At some point. But as we will cover today, there are a lot of things that I need to make before we get to that point. I have made some progress on my crazy socks, my own design. Uh, not much, uh, but I made quite a bit yesterday actually in a little lecture. <laughs> so this is what they look like now. This is the sock I've come the furthest with. I am knitting them both at the same time, but sort of separately. Because I want to remember what I've done in terms of techniques, but... Yeah, yeah. They are so mental. They are completely mental with all the pinks and the burgundy and the deep green and just... Oh, the yellow and the brown. It's just they're proper ugly, but they're crazy and they kind of work. Like, look at them from a distance. Like, I I think there's some <laughs> consistency. I don't know. It's a scrap yarn project. It's not like a plan the yarn, but it works. And I do believe I have enough yarn. I've been sort of trying to measure how much I need and wound those into tiny balls because there are like four. At the time, I'm not keeping the brown yarn on the needles, like in the, on the project. But the rest of them I've sort of wound together and stuffed into the sock. I tried doing these on Magic Leap 2 at one time and I don't recommend it. It's a mess. It's a mess. I've started another project as well, but it is secret, again, because it's that time of year. However, I have a finished object. Well, true, technically. My cerebral mittens and my own design. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my design because I am hosting a knitting class, so I need a pattern that I can legally share for the course that is in DK weight, which is quite unusual for these. They're normally fingering weight or even light fingering weight. And the ones that are DK weight are knit with a very tight gauge. So I wanted some that would knit up really quickly. So these are a gauge of about 24 stitches per 10 centimeters. And the usual traditional DK 
Sarbi mittens are 28 stitches. So yeah, this should knit up quite a bit quicker. They're a bit wet still after blocking. I blocked them. Well done me. Um, but wet. I'll see if I can put them on. Uh, they have a very good fit though. And they smell really sheepy. This is Susan Crawford's Exelana DK yarn. And it's like proper sheepy, sheepy wool. I am really happy with this. And uh, can we get some focus? Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Super nice. Very good fit for my hands. Uh, very happy about having achieved that. It's not something I can say a lot. They are a bit on the short side because my fingers really like do. They're here. Uh, usually you get a bit more air with Norwegian mittens, but why really? Why? So my task for today is to actually photograph these in a sort of simple white background so that I can send it off to Knit With Attitude so that I can put up an ad of my knitting classes. and. If you aren't in or near London, I do highly recommend that you sign up. I need to have at least two people to not kind of pay more to host a class than what I earn from having it. And even with two people, it's not really going to be worth my time. So I'm hoping to have the full six of the whole course. It's going to be a class for six people for two hours every Sunday over three weeks. So six week six hours altogether. It will run from the 27th of November to the 4th and 11th of December from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock at Knit With Attitude in Stoke Newton. You have to go to their website and sign up for it when they put up the class. I, I suspect they will do it today or to... Well, this is going to be posted on Friday, so it will probably be posted by then. So yeah, consider this my announcement. Go to Knit With Attitude's website, to the workshop page, and please, please, please sign up. Um, I don't know if you have to do that via email or in the shop. I think you can do it via email, but you have to pay up front, I do think. Uh, I think it's going to be worth your time. I have so many techniques that I want to cover. A lot of them you have to use, some of them you don't have to use. So what I'm going to do is uh, focus on uh, knitting with a round and strand and knitting. That's like what you have to do. Uh, there will be increases and decreases, left leaning and right leaning. Um, I'm going to show you the old Norwegian cast on, but you don't have to use it if you have a preferred cast on that's good for like fairly stretchy bind up cast ons because you have to get this over your breast. And we're gonna just go do a one by one rib for two rounds and then we do the chart which is I will like teach you how to follow. Uh thumb gusset, how to pick up the stitches for the thumb and it that how to do your decreases here and then increases for the gusset. Uh gusset. Um yeah, oh, I'm very excited about this, as maybe you can tell. I have a lot of knowledge about this and I'm very happy to spread Norwegian mitten knitting to London. I talked about Love Knitting the other episode. I made an order with them and uh, they sent off the knitting needles right away, but the major bit was missing and I told them, and they were like, oops, we will send it to you today and I have yet to receive it, so... Yeah, I'm not particularly thrilled about that. So, so far my experience with love knitting is a bit so-and-so. I'll probably order from them a couple of times more so to have a more a fair sample to judge them by because this might just be an accident and because it's kind of irregular then that kind of tends to, I guess, accumulate. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed I will receive it soon. I will send them an email today probably about that. So I'm still under a yarn diet or as I call it, a self-imposed yarn buying ban, which means that I bought yarn. <laughs> It means I'm not supposed to buy yarn, but I did because I came across this yarn, I think, via Instagram called Ovis, and that's my boyfriend's screen name for like video games. So, like, I have to get Ovis yarn. Um, so, yeah, it's just two sets of mini skeins because I've been having a go at a me cozy memories blanket, as they call them, and I just call it my ugly memories blanket because it is. I have showed you this before, and I only have these four squares still. And I'm happy with all squares except for maybe the bottom two. So this one is fine. It's kind of yarn I should use for these, but my cast on is just not appropriate. I should have done the same cast on that you do later when you pick up the stitches instead. And this is just not nice because it's like it doesn't stretch out really. Uh, and this yarn, I don't know if it's appropriate. It is a sock yarn, but it's a single ply and it's very sort of fluffy and I get a bit woolly. I don't know if it fits. I might just integrate it when I have a bigger piece instead of putting it at the edge. So I might just start knitting a new blanket with the new minis that I get and then I'll unrip this out and put them in. And then you'll see. I will get back to what I'm going to do next.
I am also doing my first yarn swap, which makes me really nervous. It's a bit silly. Uh, I'm very happy about it. It's just like I can only go through my stash in order to find Norwegian wool, and I'm like, well, if I am willing to give this away, then why would anyone else want it? But of course, that's just silly. It's really good wool. Like Norwegian wool is like wool in world by world standards. It's good. It should be more exported, really, because it's really good. And I'm having to like persuade myself of the stuff that I'm giving away is good stuff even though I necessarily won't be using it so yeah I'm very excited about doing a yarn swap and I am excited about doing more so I'll probably just hoard more yarn when I go to Norway now so that I can have more yarn swaps oh I swear I don't have a problem with yarn I have a problem without yarn uh, speaking of yarn I'm more hoarding yarn in Norway because I've thought about maybe opening my own business this was an idea a friend of mine from knitting meet I've came up with which she just said, uh, why don't you make a mitten knitting kit? And I kind of started churning in my head. I'm like, yeah, I can make my own patterns and I can get yarn from Norway, which is really cheap and just sell the whole kit for whatever people sell kits for nowadays. Apparently my ideal price is much lower than the market price and that's bad because then other people who are trying to make a living out of this will be angry with me. So I might have to just go up price wise just because that's, what people do, uh, even though I necessarily don't see the need to, because I don't have to pay that much for the yarn. I was even hoping to get wholesale price, but it seems like that's unlikely. It seems, it seems like Norwegian yarn producers are not really into that kind of thing. They only want to do export to really, really major shops, supporting the individual seller and knitter and patent designer. They're not, they don't really understand like there's value in that. I mean, I've not tried yet. I shouldn't say anything. I've just been Googling around for other people who made attempts a couple of years prior to me. And I'm not very hopeful. I have two brands that I will try. One is definitely uh, will make it a lot easier for me. The other one, I could get more versatile yarn. So pros and cons there. Uh, that's all I'm going to say for now, I think. But I'm very excited about the prospect of doing this. So either way, I think I could just buy a whole bunch of yarn when I am in Norway and bring it here and then sell it for whatever the market value is because I don't want to like charge too much and I don't want to charge too little so yeah and make them good make them nice I'm thinking about packaging now like how I can make it um, something that people will like but something that's also not going to cost me much and something that's going to be lightweight and I'm, I have a few ideas but you have any ideas then do share because this is like a I guess a podcast production nice gain doing it production so I like this to be a, like, a collaborative effort. If you have any input, then you know I will be happy to hear it. Yeah. So yeah, worst case scenario, I have to buy yarn in Norway when I'm there, or maybe have some yarn shipped there that I get someone to send over here, and I have to buy it for like regular market price. Best case scenario is that I get it for wholesale price and I have it shipped here. I have to pay like VAT and stuff like that, but that's fine. And I can then actually afford to have them being sold in knit with attitude because a woman running there was very happy to do that uh depending on how i managed to do this whole thing but right now it's just an idea in my mind i might just test run it after christmas because that's when i can get yarn there and i can see how it works and if it works well i can contact the yarn companies and see if they're interested for now i'm just trying to get self-registered because i need to do that anyway and it's really difficult because i don't know my national insurance number because i've not needed it up, up to this point so yeah, it looks like we have to do the inevitable costume change again because I have to shut the windows when I film and that makes it really warm because my radiator just goes haywire. So I'll find something to wear at some point. But for this episode, I thought we could talk about my knitting queue, which basically means that we're just going to cover lots of nice patterns and yarns that go along with them. So who's not up for that? Um, hopefully nobody would raise their hands. Uh, first thing I want to make, well not the first thing, well yeah, first thing. I want to make Christmas balls. I make Christmas balls every year. I love making Christmas balls. I believe I've talked about them before. Uh, they're designed by Anna and Carlos, Norwegian knitting duo. They brand themselves as Norwegian, but one of them is uh, Swedish, so... Scandinavian knitting duo that specialize in Scandinavian knitting design and kind of modernizing it and bringing it abroad, which I always do appreciate because there's very little effort from Norway in general in doing that. So very much happy for them to export Norwegian knitting and I like making their Christmas balls. I think they're really cool. Uh, they become sort of Christmas tradition for me. I've done it for the past, I think two years, maybe three, uh, definitely doing it again. 
probably as gifts this time because I have quite many, although they are in Norway and I'm not going to celebrate Christmas in Norway this year. It's the first year I'm going to celebrate it here in London with my boyfriend and his family. So that's exciting. So yes, I have two suitable yarns for this that I tend to just mix up. I don't really care. One of them is Sister Negrene. Uh, Anna and Clara's cotton yarn, basically. It's fine fingering weight cotton. You get 160 meters per 50 gram ball. And they sell these for 50 Norwegian monies. That's about 1.73 euros. So they're pretty good value. I just hoard these when I'm in Norway because this shop has not opened in London. I hope they will at some point because they're basically like Tiger and Tiger's everywhere here now. It's a big success. So Sister Nagana, get to it. Come here, come here and start a shop where you will be selling my cotton yarns and all your other vintage goodies. It's basically Tiger with the vintage image, basically. Um, the other yarn I use, which is more easy to get around here, is Drops. Drops Saffron, lovely, lovely cotton yarn. It is quite similar. Oh dear, where are we? It's got 160 meters per 50 grams, so what's that? 50 me 5 meters? Oh, it's the same. Uh, it's a bit harder, like this is a far softer cotton. Uh, still not as hard as like soft dishcloth cottons that you might have tried before. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they work well together. I use mostly white and then black and red with my Christmas balls, and I also use lots of other different colors. And yeah, they're very nice. They they just mean Christmas to me now when I make these. That makes me in the, in the Christmas spirit. I have a couple of socks that I want to make as well. First pair is the Scandium socks. I uh, thought about using um, Drops Fable for this. I just hoarded Drops Fable when, when there was a sale in May for all of the yarns. Uh, so yeah, it's just good stuff. Uh, get about like I think 205 or 210 meters on these, 205 um, for 50 grams gains, which is, you know, if you have two of the, if you have two of these, that's enough for a pair of socks, definitely. I usually end up with a lot of scrap yarns after making these. And I think the sock pattern is really great. I am, I've been hoping to try a different type of heel than the regular heel flap. I want to try Fish Lips Kiss heel or the German Short Rose heel. It doesn't seem like this pattern will easily accommodate that. So I might have to do the heel flap once more. If you have any ideas how I could do a different heel with these, do let me know. For now, I'm not super keen on that heel flap. But I might just have to, because that seems to work better with the um, strand knitting pattern. Anyway, they're gorgeous. The other thing I want to make is the garland socks. With this yarn. More drops fable! Uh, I hope these colors will be right. Uh, seems like dark gray and off white is the yarn to go for. And I just think they're really nice. And I do think I could incorporate a Fish Lips Kiss heel or German Short Rose here. I don't know which is like the preferred heel. I hear a lot of people raving about the Fish Lips Kiss heel, and I have bought it. It's just that I hear a lot of people having tried that, then trying German Short Rose, and be like, oh my god, this is even better. And I'm like, I just want to cut right to the good stuff. I'm also thinking about making the Sienna socks. I just don't have yarn for that yet. I thought I ordered it along with the other drops yarns. I just didn't. So once I'm done knitting up that sock yarn, I might, uh, I hope I will be knitting up that first before I buy more. I will venture into other sock yarn brands, like maybe Opal, Regia. I've tried Regia before and I'm gonna have a go at Opal in a bit. Um, so yeah, I might try some other brands, that should be exciting. Maybe West Yorkshire Spinners. Anyone try their sock yarn? Do let me know. Now let's talk mittens. That's my speciality. I will never get tired of knitting mittens. Other people have that with socks. With me, For me, it's mittens. And so I think the first thing I really want to try finish, other than a Sarbe mitten I'm gonna make for my sister, I wanna try knitting my Latin mitten kits. So some of you might remember these from the Knitting and Stitching show. I love these so much. They just <laughs> they're just full of all the goodies. Basically, the yarn that you need: pure wool, latvian wool, and not no needles because you might need it for different needle size depending on how you knit. Uh, yeah, they have the wool. They have the patterns. Good. I will show you. Yeah. So 
So, mm. pattern. I'm not going to show you that in detail because, you know, it's paid for. Uh, I see yarn. Oh, so yeah, I'm super excited about trying these. I want to try these before having a go at my Latin Mitten book because that book is a bit intimidating. This is the book in question. Oh. Mm. Ah. oh, I showed you before. I just have to keep going through it and show you. Oh, is that the Mitten Summit? I don't know. Uh, yeah, just love this so much. Uh, just very limited information in terms of the gauge you should try to achieve and the needle size that you need and that kind of thing which makes me a bit nervous that I'm going to make something that's too big or too little because just measuring my hand is not necessarily going to work for me I never seem to find how my hand size and mitten sizes correspond I just I'm lucky sometimes uh, this is definitely something that I will aim to learn better and once I have mastered Latvian mittens I will make these these are like on top of my knitting everything. If I have mastered these, I don't know what I'll be knitting after these. It's just, I keep them on such a pedestal because I've seen so many people in Ravelry make them just gorgeous, gorgeous mittens like these. But most of them have troubles making them small enough. They tend to turn out huge like for men with gigantic hands and I'm, I want to make them for me and I'm like... I will have to find some nifty ways of shrinking them. I might cut off some stitches on the sides and go down many needle size and use the finest wool possible. Initially I thought about using this. This is the Rödos Lamps wool. Oh, I love this. It's got I think 250 meters per 50 grams. I'm just now worried that even that might be too thick. So I might have a go at Holst yarns or maybe use the Jameson's of Shetland Ultra yarn. So this is basically lace yarn and I might just have to use lace yarn. Uh, it's just that I don't happen to have this in black. Which means I will have to buy more just because I... Why didn't I get this in black? Maybe they were out, I don't know. Just I, I am super excited about this. Um, so maybe that's a good thing to combine, but before that I have to master Latin mittens in general and then I'll have a go at the big price. <laughs> I noticed that I tend, I tend to think of them as like the boss of Latin mittens as if it was a game. But yeah, it's the boss. It's the big one. Hopefully they won't be that big for me though. Uh, I've been thinking about knitting shawls a lot. I don't make shawls much. I have made a couple of, late, couple of shawls lately as you've seen. But yeah, I want to get better at shawls and I have so many good luxury yarns now that I could use. So I just thought I'd show you a couple that I've had in mind, a couple of patterns that I want to have got, I mean. So, Duchess of Devonshire. Some of you may have seen Kate of Inside number 23 make it in the Outlander yarn in, I think, the Volky Base by Volenwein. And I just want to do that. Uh, in hindsight, maybe that's not my colours after all. Maybe I should use the Mexican hot chocolate yarn. Uh, regardless, it means that I have to order more yarn, which is, you know, something I shouldn't be doing now. Um, I do have some yarns that I could use. I could definitely use the Sock and Dolinches yarns. I could definitely use this. I have four of these, so, you know, that's something. I just... Mm, they might be my colours, they might not be. I might just make that shawl twice because I can. But on the other hand, I bought four of these and that's enough for a garment. So it's, it just feels a bit silly to go ahead and make a shawl and then be left with two skeins. I'm like, well, I could just make another shawl the same colours. So I don't know. It's like, do I go for a featherweight cardigan or is it just like the kind of cosy cosy yarn that you should save for a shawl? Other patterns I have in mind is this shawl. I believe it's called the Light and Up Shawl and right now the strongest contender for being the yarn of choice for this pattern is Wollenwein's Gashley Crumb on the Narwhal base. I feel like this colour will work well with that pattern. Um, I don't know, this is so precious. I, I, want, I, want to, I want to use it for the ideal pattern. Maybe that's the one, maybe, I don't know. I, I need opinions on this you guys, I need opinions. 
but yeah I just really like the pattern anyway so I'm gonna make it with some of my yarns because I just love the tiny little tassels at the end and the alternating god stitch and holes I think it's quite clever in its simplicity and then there's the rain eye shawl and I thought maybe that's where we use this by third world yarns yeah it's so nice it's gonna be nice for a sort of stripey look so I thought maybe stripey with this I don't know Seems to be a fun, creative thing to do, though. We'll see. We'll see. It just seems like the kind of pattern that would work with so many things because the holes is going to sort of tone down the crazy variegated stuff. So I could use this, my Skyfire yarn by Sparkle Duck. Yeah. Or I could use this, which is also by Third World Yarns. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I paid so much for this yarn and they're so precious and they're like really unique given that they're hand dyes. I want to use them for the perfect thing. I'm sure this is something that enthusiasts of hand dyed yarn feel all the time. I'm new to this so I'm just very very nervous and I just want to find the perfect patterns for my perfect yarns. Then just a silver shawl which I also think could work with just about anything. It could work with the woolen vine yarn, it could work with one of these babes and my um, yarn indulgences. <laughs> Could work with a lot. I could maybe use my other skein of Madeleine Tosh even. I don't know. That's the message of this when it comes to shawls. I have no idea what I'm doing. I need help. Help. Okay, okay. Back to my comfort zone. Garments. I can do garments. Garments is something I love knitting. I'm probably gonna do a special on that as well. Uh, let me know if you're interested though because you know I want it to be something that you want to watch. Uh, for now I really want to knit the Agatha cardigan but Andy Sutherland Oh, it's so nice. She has this unique way of just making really nice, lovely feminine stuff out of really, really chunky wool. No idea how. I've never seen anyone else do that. It's quite unique to her, to be honest, and that gets me really excited to try. And so I've been thinking, do I go with Cascade 220, which is, you know, a nice uh, sort of worsted iron weight yarn. Um, it would definitely work. It's what she recommends. It's affordable. I could get that yarn for £27 for the whole cardigan, that's great, right? It's just that I could also use Queen's and Cole Lark. And Queen's and Cole Lark is going to cost me £87. So there's a £60 difference there and that difference, and that difference has to be worth it. So if you have any experience with either yarn, let me know. I, I'm i thinking about just putting Lark on my wish list for Christmas and my birthday, which is coming right after. So that's exciting. Regardless, I will make this card again. I'll probably make it as soon as January starts and and I think I will make it in red because I always wanted a nice cropped bright red cardigan. And then next time I go to Loop, which will be on this Thursday, I'll have a look at the different shades of red you can get Lark in and make a note of that. As some of you might remember, I've been knitting these mitts by Kate Davis. Still not weaved in the ends because, yeah, meh. Um, not even holding them in pairs. Anyway, so I want to make Kate Davis's Miss Rachel yoke. That's the whole point. That's the whole reason why I'm making these to find out which of these ma combinations of colors will fit. And I think I'm gonna go with this. This. Uh, but I don't know. I am still up for changing my mind because this is very nice and radiant. And this is more of a muted thing. I was going for the muted thing because the thing about if you look at this picture. It looks like a brown cardigan, and I've definitely chosen this of light brown here. It's actually supposed to be grey, so I've kind of have to look for yarn that looks like it looks in that picture rather than how her wool looks like to find something that looks like that, because I want that. I don't want what it actually looks like, even though that's nice too. I just, I want that muted sort of brown beige thing. And I think I'm ready to take it on. I just, I should finish that cardigan that's hanging over there. I should do the Agatha cardigan first. I should perhaps also finish my Burbatoon cardigan, which I showed you last episode and there's a lot of things to finish before I have a go at this. I've also wanted to make some pot holders in like old cardigan designs. This is an idea I've had for a while but I really got a kick up the bum when I saw that a Norwegian knitter called Sticky Pigan. She made them. I can show you some pictures of what she did. So she's based them on some cardigan patterns that she has in a book that I also have. I have left it in Norway but I will go pick it up at Christmas, but I still have like photocopies of it for myself because I can't carry that many books here but I keep copies that I don't share, don't worry, I'm not illegally sharing, it's just, they're mine and 
I can have a go at that now actually. I don't know if I will have time before Christmas, although they are good Christmas gifts. It's just that I've already given potholders to just about anyone I can imagine. And anyway, yarn I want to use is Drop Saffron again. Perfectly good cotton yarn. I'm a big fan of this cotton. It's just exactly what I want from cotton. Nothing fancy, something that just works for clo like clothes and dishwasher bits and the pot holders, etc. Just good for what it is. Uh, good for Christmas balls as well, as I mentioned. Uh, very excited about trying those pot holders. This should be fairly easy. You just look at a chart and you knit that twice in a round. Uh, you can basically, you go look at the pattern I put on Ravelry for pot holders and just substitute those first 20 rows, rounds, I mean, and the chart with whatever chart you want to put inside, inside, on, incorporate, whatever, English, I don't do it. Uh, and you can have pot holders that your own design. I don't know if I can call it my own designs when I am looking for them in a pattern book, but definitely have a go look at one of those chart books that I have. I could definitely do a lot of this and that's kind of how you design mittens too. I've been told that I can basically just make a mitten book in no time, which is actually kind of true. I need time to knit them up, of course. You can't just write down mitten patterns and hope that they will work. You kind of have to test them a few times, so it's not easy as it sounds, but definitely easier than you'd think. So I might go into mitten design, I don't know, years time from now. Maybe when I need proper PhD procrastination or when I've been good and finished it. And maybe have some mitten patterns to share. I also want to get into garment design. That's not exactly on my queue as it is because I want to make my own design and completely bottom up, not based on anything. Uh, and I have something in mind, I want to make this sort of deep green cropped card again. Either with some laser cables or stranded knitting, probably stranded knitting, you know me. Uh, maybe I could combine both, that might be overkill, it might be really nice. It's exciting anyway. Have you noticed that I seem to have a word of each episode? Like this episode is definitely exciting. Uh, a couple of episodes back it was ridiculous. Because I did buy a ridiculous amount of yarn. And yeah, that seems to be a thing that I do. Maybe it's gonna be a theme. Speaking of which though, about exciting, excitement. I wanna make this into a pair of lace mittens, picture on the side. I'm using a slightly different yarn than what's recommended, um, just because, because I found this, because it's lovely, because it's virtually the same, although you get a bit more meters on this. Um, yeah, super, super nice. It's the same yarn that I made my Kate Davis stuff in, and just my favorite yarn, really. Uh, just good stuff. Nice bright yellow. As you can see in the background, I don't do much yellow. The yellow I have there is like either unused or something I'm mixing in with different patterns like the Kate Davis gauntlets, mitts, whatever you want to call them. So yellow is not something I venture in a lot, so making yellow lace mit mittens, that's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And as some of you already know, I've had a go at lace mittens before with like varying luck. So. I have made these and they are too small, like this is where the ribbing should start really and that's kind of where they end. So I have been thinking about just ripping them out. They are getting to my nerves right now so another thing I could do is just pick up these stitches here because it's a very nice little edge here, like a border where you can easily pick up stitches and knit something down. So I could have a band around here and then do the ribbing further down. That could actually work and I don't have to rip out these because they fit from like this bit up uh, so yeah that's worth looking into because it's not like this yarn is particularly precious to me so don't have to be in a hurry to rip them out or anything and it's so pretty look at that so pretty definitely going to have a go at it again on bigger needles on the quince and co yarn that i have in chickadee other mittens I want to make is the Snow White mittens. I've talked about them before. I showed you the yarn back then. It's buried way, way in there right now, so please don't make me dig it back out. It's just, they're nice. It's gonna be lovely, and there will be more grey than white, which is kind of against the Snow White name, but who cares? It's gonna be lovely. And I will have a go at another pair of lace mittens. The reason why I'm excited about lace mittens is because, well, I'm new to lace and I love knitting mittens, and it's gonna be nice to try making mittens with just one strand of yarn, because I'm just used to mittens being too complicated right now, and it would be cool to try to simplify it a bit. Uh, in general, I have a huge Serbi mitten project. I have mentioned it previously, but I'm not gone into detail, and judging by my battery levels, I won't be able to do it today either. However, it's 
my plan is just to make as many as possible and just have a pile of stabbing mittens uh, and I have a book for it. I'm gonna make more designs and I have lots of yarn for it. That's usually what my pure wool yarns are for because they're quite few of each type. Uh, it's a nice thing to do if you want to try different types of fine pure wool. God, I'm talking so quickly because the little blinking battery icon is stressing me out. So yeah, I will definitely talk more about this project in the future. It's not a project, it's just like a goal of mine. It's a goal, yeah. Other than that, I've had some crazy lecturing days. The deadline for the students' project was last week and I was like so stressed. There was no time to do anything of the stuff I should be doing. Uh, we managed, the student man students manage, most of it's fine. It's generally the people I don't ask for help that do worse. So ask for help. If you're a student, just ask a lecturer. They're happy to help usually, even if they don't seem like it's just because they get a lot of questions and we get a bit tired. But I'm happy to help, so I'm sure other lecturers are too. Yeah, otherwise I am just excited about things that are coming up and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!